All right, so in the last part of the lesson, we learned what all of the bias currents through all the transistors were. And now we're going to start doing small signal analysis. And we're going to start looking at the first stage, which consists of Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, and Q7, where Q1 uh, through 4 are a differential pair, one that we haven't seen before, so we'll uh, examine that in a moment, and Q5 through 7 form a beta helper current mirror. So looking at that input stage, and note that I drew the arrows wrong in the transistors originally. The correct arrows are the ones that are in red. We have an input on the base, output on the emitter, feeding current into input on the emitter, and we're looking to see what current flows through the collector. In other words, we're trying to find the GM of this transistor. So like we've been doing, we'll make a simplified model where we put our input in differentially. We have some differential input resistance, RID. We have our transconductance, big GM1 times BID. And of course, this transconductance flows through some output resistance, which we'll label RO1 and we'll feed this voltage to the second stage of the amplifier. So to measure GM, what we're going to do is short circuit the drains of these transistors and measure the current that flows into the short circuit due to a voltage at the input. All right, and to do this, we're going to look at a half circuit. We'll note that we have a line of symmetry from here to here, so we can look at the half circuit consisting of either Q1 and Q3 or Q2 and Q4. And our schematic for that might look something like this. Okay, so our small signal model for this particular circuit We have VID over 2 being input into the base of Q1. We have at the base of Q1 an R pi 1 that feeds to the emitter. We have a little GM1 times V1, where V1 is the voltage across R pi 1. Now, the, you'll note that the emitter of Q1, we've labeled node A. So this is node A here. And from this point, we would have a GM times V3 and we would have an R pi 3 that we were measuring that V3 across. Okay, so if we solve KCL at node A, the node that we just labeled, we would be able to write GM1 times V1 plus V1 times R pi 1 is equal to GM3 times V3 plus V3 times R pi 3. And we could also do a KVL loop through this branch that I just drawn. And if we did that, we would find that VID over 2 is equal to V1 plus V3. Now, let's make a few substitutions. So remember that 
r pi is equal to beta over gm. So if we take this and substitute in, we could write gm1 times v1 times the quantity 1 plus 1 over beta 1 is equal to gm3 times v3 times 1 plus 1 over beta 3. Now making a substitution into our KVL expression we would find that VID over 2 is equal to minus V3 times the quantity GM3 times 1 plus 1 over beta 3 divided by gm1 times 1 plus 1 over beta 1 plus 1. If we assume that beta is much, much greater than 1 and that gm1 is approximately equal to gm3, then we could show that v3 is equal to VID over 4. Alright, going back and looking at our circuit here, we can see that I out is approximately equal to the difference of IC3 and IC4, and the reason for that is the current mirror. So we have I out is equal to IC3 minus IC4. So we know that IC3 is equal to GMV3. And we know IC4 is equal to GM4V4. In other words, I out is equal to minus GM3 times VID over 4 minus GM4 times VID over 4 or is approximately equal to GM minus GM3 times VID over 2. And we define big GM1 as equal to I out over VID. And so we can say that this is equal to minus GM3 over 2, which is equal to minus gm1 over 2. So we could say that big gm1 is equal to gm1 3 over 2. All right, so in this case, what does that equal? Well, gm1 is equal to ic over vt. We know that ic was equal to 9.5 microamps from the prior analysis and VT is 25 millivolts. If we add our factor of 2 and define big GM1, we'd find big GM1 is equal to 9.5 microamps over 2 times 25 millivolts, which is equal to 183.4 microsiemens. All right, now we need to find the input resistance. So we will place a test voltage source at the input of the transistor. 
with a value of Vx and measure the current Ix that flows into that test voltage source. We know that looking down into this diode connected transistor we see approximately 1 over Gm3. So from inspection we can find our input resistance We know that this is the half resistance, so RID over 2 is equal to R pi 1 plus beta 1 plus 1 times 1 over GM 3. Now in this process, the beta for NPNs is equal to 250 and the beta for PNPs is equal to 50. So we know that our R pi 1 is equal to beta over little gm1 or is equal to 684 kilo ohms. So our input differential resistance RID is equal to 2.72 mega ohms which is very big and that's what we want. Okay, lastly we'll find the output resistance of this first stage and again we would take a voltage source Vx and measure the current Ix that flows from that voltage source. Now looking up into Q2 we see a 1 over Gm2 and remember we need to find the resistance looking up and the resistance looking down uh, for this circuit. So if we look up, R up is equal to RO4 times 1 plus GM4 times 1 over GM2. This is equal to 10.4 mega ohms. R looking down is equal to RO6 times 1 plus GM6 times the 1 kilo ohm resistance which is R2. This is equal to 18.7 mega ohms and our total resistance in this case will be R up in parallel with R down which is equal to 6.8 mega ohms. All right, so this concludes the first stage. What we're going to do next is figure out how much the second stage loads the first stage.